Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's match, I wanted to talk about this video's sponsor, Marvel Strike Force. It's a perfect way to spend a little time when you're waiting for your next CEDH pod to fire. It's a free-to-play turn-based RPG featuring nearly 200 of your favorite Marvel characters. It's super easy to pick up and play, and I liked being able to do something while waiting for the Gitrog player to demonstrate their loot. As a CDH player, what really drew me into the game was the depth of play offered. There are synergies between different characters, like Avengers, Spider-Verse, or the X-Men. Just as each player at your local playgroup has their own style, characters in the game have different types too. You can play with Brawlers, Controllers, Blasters, and Protectors, all with different roles on your team and approaches to battle. Just as we like to upgrade our own CEDH decks with the latest tech, there are awesome ways to level up your characters in the game. Features like promotions, gear, and training all make your characters better. Just as there are a million different formats in Magic so you'll never get bored, there are a ton of ways to leverage your teams. This includes story campaigns, blitz campaigns where you take on other players' teams, and raids that let you team up with other players to tackle a bunch of challenges. It's free to download and free to play, and it is super fun. I've recently assembled my full Avengers team for my Heroes campaign, and now I'm working on my Sinister Six team for my Villains campaign as well. Check out Marvel Strike Force for free by checking out our link in the description below. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Chad, piloting Falco Spara, Pact Weaver. This deck wins with either Hermit Druid lines or Devoted Druid combos with his Commander and Sensei's Divining Top. Chad's opening hand contains Rhystic Study, Mindbreak Trap, Adakar Wastes, Mana Crypt, Jataxian Probe, Viseju who endures, and his London Mulligan is a path to exile. Next, we have Charles, piloting Heliod, God of the Sun. Mono White Guy is back with his classic Heliod Brew. This is a stack deck looking to win by slowing the board down and swinging in for combat damage. Charles' opening hand contains an Expedition Map, Land Tax, Blind Obedience, Aura of Silence, Sanctum Prelate, Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, and a Snow-Covered Plains. After that, we have Drake, piloting the partner pair of Eleven the Mage and Mike the Dungeon Master. This is a mid-range farm deck that aims to combo with Spellseeker and eventually go for a Thoracle win. Drake's opening hand contains a Pact of Negation, Diabolic Intent, Rhystic Study, Doxide Extortionist, Deathrite Shaman, Gaia's Cradle, and a Command Tower. Finally, we have Zack, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom, Ludovic's Opus. This deck, titled Blue Farm, is a mid-range deck looking to leverage card advantage through its commanders and win with cards like Underworld Breach, Ad Nauseam, and Thassa's Oracle. Zack's opening hand contains a Morphic Pool, Polluted Delta, Mana Crypt, Swan Song, Fierce Guardianship, Windfall, and his London Mulligan is a Pact of Negation. Without further ado, let's kick off this maniacal makeshift magical maneuver. Chad wins the Double Masters 2 Spoiler Season guessing game and gets to start us off. Chad draws a card for turn and plays an Adakar Waste. He casts a Mana Crypt. He taps his Adakar Waste to help cast a turn 1, Rhystic Study. He pays 2 life to help cast a Taxian Probe, targeting Zack. He looks at Zack's hand and draws a card. He casts Chrome Mox and printing Mind Break Trap. All finished up and with an explosive turn 1, Chad passes. Charles draws a card for turn and plays a Snow Covered Plains. He casts Land Tax, Rhystic Triggers, and Chad draws. Charles passes. Drake draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Deathrite Shaman. Rhystic Triggers and Chad draws. Drake gives a turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts a Mana Crypt. Rhystic Triggers and Chad draws. Zack passes. During his upkeep, Chad loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He taps his Adakar Waste to help cast his Commander, Falco Spara, Pact Weaver. He removes a shield counter from Falco to help cast a Soul Ring from the top of his library. He passes. During his upkeep, Charles's land tax triggers. He fetches up three snow-covered planes into his hand. He draws and plays a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. He casts Blind Obedience. He passes, discarding to hand size. Drake draws and plays an Underground Sea. He activates Deathrite, exiling Marsh Flats from Chad's Graveyard to help cast a Rhystic Study of his own. In response, Zack casts Brainstorm, paying for Chad's Rhystic. Zack draws three and then puts two back on top. Then Drake's Rhystic resolves. Drake passes. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Tundra. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver, entering tap through Blind Obedience. Both Rhystics trigger and Zack pays for Chad's and Drake draws. Zack gives a turn to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Rejuvenating Springs. He casts Ponder, paying for Drake's Rhystic. He looks at the top three, doesn't like what he sees, shuffles and draws. He casts Elvish Mystic, paying for Rhystic. It enters tap through Blind Obedience. He attacks Drake with Falco Spara. Drake takes it and Chad passes. During his upkeep, Charles land tax triggers. He fetches up a snow-covered plains into his hand. He draws and plays the snow-covered plains. He casts Sanctum Prelate with both drawing through Rhystic. Prelate enters and Charles chooses one. He gives a turn to Drake. Drake draws and plays a Guy's Cradle. 
He casts Dox at Extortionist, paying for Chaz Ristic. In response, Chad casts Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, targeting Doxide. Drake's Ristic triggers, and Chad pays. In response, Drake casts Pact of Negation, targeting Force of Will, paying for Chad's Ristic. Pact counters Force, and Doxide resolves. It enters, and Drake creates seven treasures. But they enter tap because of Blind Obedience. Setting up for the next turn, Drake passes. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He moves to combat and attacks Drake with Timna. Drake takes it, and Zack gains two life. In a second main phase, Zack pays one and draws one through Timna. He casts Demonic Tutor, and both draw through Ristic. Demonic Tutor resolves, and he fetches up a card into his hand. He casts a Dockside Extortion of his own, and both draw through Ristic again. Dockside enters, and Zack creates 14 treasures, all tapped through Blind Obedience. Zack, also setting up for a massive turn, passes to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Horizon Canopy. He decides to hold up mana and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Charles Land Tax triggers. He fetches up three Snow-Covered Plains into his hand. He draws and plays the Snow-Covered Plains. He activates his Nykthos, adding four white. He casts Stony Silence, not paying for either Ristic. In response, Zack casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Stony Silence. Both Ristics trigger, and Zack pays for Drake's, and Chad draws. Stony Silence is countered, and Charles follows it up by casting the Restoration of Iganjo, not paying for either Ristic. Restoration enters, gets its first counter, and Charles fetches up a Snow-Covered Plains into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Drake with Sanctum Prelate. Drake takes it, and Charles passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Drake pays for his Pact of Negation. He draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He cracks some of his treasures to help cast Wandering Archaic, paying for Chaz Ristic. The table groans, Archaic resolves, and Drake gives the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws and cracks some treasures to help cast his other commander, Krom Ludovic Opus. Both Ristics trigger, and Drake and Chad draw. Forgetting that Krom would enter the battlefield tap through Blind Obedience, he moves to combat and attacks Drake with Timna and Charles with Dockside. They both take it, and Zack gains 2 life. In his second main phase, Zack pays 2 and draws 2 through Timna. He plays a Polluted Delta. He casts Chrome Mox, not paying for either Ristic. Chrome Mox enters, and Zack imprints a Swan Song. He follows it up by casting Windfall. Both Ristics and Wandering Archaic trigger. Zack declines to pay for any of the triggers, Drake draws, declines to copy with Wandering Archaic, and then Chad declines to draw from Ristic. In response, Chad casts Court of Calling, where X equals 2. Drake's Ristic and Archaic trigger, and Chad pays for both. Court resolves, and Chad fetches up a Hermit Druid onto the battlefield. Then Windfall resolves. Each player discards their hand and draws 11 cards. Next, Zack casts Bolus's Citadel, not paying for either Ristic. It resolves, and Zack looks at the top card of his library. He cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He cracks some of his treasures to help cast Arcane Signet, not paying for either Ristic. He casts Talisman of Progress, not paying again. Zack passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Chad casts Force of Vigor, exiling Worldly Tutor, targeting Zack's Bolus's Citadel and Drake's Ristic Study. Drake's Ristic and Archaic Trigger. Chad taps his Horizon Canopy to help pay for both. Krom triggers and Zack draws. Force of Vigor resolves and Zack's Citadel and Drake's Ristic are destroyed. Zack then discards the hand size and the turn moves to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad loses his Mana Crypt Trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Glen Alondra Archmage. In response, knowing the power of this card in Chad's deck, Drake casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, paying for Chad's Ristic. Force of Will resolves, and Glen Alondra is countered. Next, Chad casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Elvish Mystic, Wandering Archaic, and Chrom Trigger. Chad pays for Archaic, and Zack draws. The table knows that if Evolution resolves, it is game over. Charles and Drake both pass priority, and Zack finds himself in a bit of a dilemma. He has a Pact of Negation in hand, but only has four lands in play. Charles has the restoration of a Ganjo ready to return Stony Silence to the battlefield, which would shut off all artifacts. This makes it so that Zack can't pay for Pact. So, Zack makes a deal with Charles saying that he will counter Evolution if he doesn't use a Ganjo to return Stony Silence to the battlefield. Charles agrees, and Zack casts Pact of Negation, targeting Eldritch Evolution, paying for Chad's Ristic. Eldritch is countered, and Chad passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Charles land tax triggers. He fetches up three snow-covered planes into his hand. He draws, and in his main phase, the restoration of a Ganjo gets another counter. Charles keeps his word, discarding Grand Abolisher and returning it to the battlefield. He plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn. He casts Catilda, Dawnheart Martyr. Ristic triggers, and Chad draws. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help activate his Nyknos, adding 9 white. He casts Null Rod, Krom and Ristic Trigger. Charles pays for Ristic, and Zack prays to the gods of magic for an answer to Null Rod. He draws, but doesn't find what he needs, and Null Rod resolves. Charles falls up with a Tukatli Honor Guard, paying for Ristic. 
He casts Archon of Ameria, not paying for Rhystic. With a board all stacked up, Charles passes, discarding to hand size. Drake draws and plays a City of Brass, tapped through Archon. He casts Demonic Tutor. Rhystic triggers and Chad draws. Drake fetches up a card into his hand. He passes. At the end of Drake's turn, Chad taps his Horizon Canopy to help cast Eladomri's Call. He fetches up a Thassa's Oracle into his hand. The turn moves to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack's packed of negation triggers. In response, Drake taps his Gaia's Cradle to help cast Abrupt Decay, targeting Nullrod, paying for Rhystic. Nullrod is destroyed, and then Zack pays for his pack trigger. You may be wondering here, why did Drake save Zack? Drake went into the tank for this decision and decided that his best way to win the game was to keep Zack around and deal with the heavy creature-based strategies from Charles and Chad. Drake doesn't run cards such as Toxic Deluge, which he knows Zack is on. It's a calculated move, so let's see how it pays off. Anyway, back to the game. Also during his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt trigger. Also, also during his upkeep, Drake uses some of his floating mana to activate his Deathrite Shaman, exiling Angel of Jubilation from Charles' graveyard, gaining two life. Zack draws and then immediately moves the combat. He attacks Chad with Grom and Drake with Dockside Extortionist. Chad blocks with Falco Spara and Drake takes it. Falco dies and Drake takes one. In a second main phase, Zack pays one and draws one through Timna. He plays an Underground Sea, tapped through Archon. All finished up, Zack passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt trigger. He draws and taps his Horizon Canopy to help cast an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Archaic triggers, and Drake copies it. In response, Chad activates Hermit Druid, milling his entire library. With Drake's Cyclonic Rift back on the stack, Zack floats mana with his Arcane Signet. Drake's Rift resolves, bouncing his opponent's non-land permanence. With Chad's Rift back on the stack, Zack uses his floating mana to cast Silence. Archaic triggers, and Drake copies it again. In response to Drake's copy, Chad flashes back Turn the Earth, targeting Force of Vigor, Force of Will, and Swords to Plowshares in his graveyard. Archaic triggers, and Drake gets another copy. He targets his Diabolic Intent, Charles' Stony Silence, and Null Rod. Both Chad and Drake's Turn the Earth resolve, the cards shuffle in, and then they each gain two life. Zack and Drake's Silence finally resolve, and then finally, Chad's Cyclonic Rift resolves. Chad plays an Exotic Orchard. Chad decides he's sick of wandering Archaic and passes, discarding to hand size. Charles draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Blind Obedience. He follows it up with a Hushbringer. He recasts Archon of Ameria. With his most important stacks pieces back out onto the battlefield, Charles passes, discarding to hand size. Drake draws and plays a Tundra, tapped through Archon. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand and taps his City of Brass to help recast Wandering Archaic. Chad groans and Archaic resolves. Drake ships the turn. Zack draws and plays a City of Brass, tapped through Archon. He casts Imperial Seal, paying for Archaic. Imperial Seal resolves, and he fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Zack passes, discarding both of his commanders to hand size, putting them into the command zone. Chad draws and plays a tapped Mana Confluence. He taps his Horizon Canopy to help recast his commander, Falco Spara, Pact Weaver. All finished up, he gives the turn to Charles. Charles draws and plays a War Room. He casts Grand Abolisher, extorting it through Blind Obedience. His opponents lose one, and he gains three. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Hushbringer and Archon of Ameria. Zack takes three, and Charles gains one. Charles passes. Drake draws and plays a tapped Wooded Foothills. He casts Draneth Magistrate. Drake passes. At the end of Drake's turn, Charles flashes in a Cathar Commando. The turn moves to Zack. Zack draws and recasts his Mana Crypt. With the back-breaking stacks pieces out, he takes no other actions and passes the turn. Chad draws, decides to copy Zack, and then recasts his own Mana Crypt. He passes. At the end of Chad's turn, Charles taps his Ancient Tomb to help activate Nykthos, adding 6 white. He flashes in Hushwing Grift, extorting it through Blind Obedience. The turn moves to Charles. Charles draws and plays a Sarah's Sanctum. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help activate Nykthos, adding 7 white. He casts Replenish, extorting it. Archaic triggers, and Charles pays. Replenish resolves, and Charles returns Sphere of Safety, Court of Grace, Aura of Silence, the Restoration of Aganjo, and Land Tax all to the battlefield. Court of Grace triggers, and Charles becomes the Monarch. The Restoration of Iganjo gets a counter, and Charles fetches up a Snow-Covered Plains into his hand. He activates War Room, pays a life, and draws a card. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Hushring Griff, Grand Abolisher, Archon of Ameria, and Hushbringer. Zack takes it, and Charles gains one. Charles moves to his instep, draws off the Monarch trigger, and passes the turn. Drake draws and plays a tapped Flooded Strand. He casts his commander, Eleven the Mage. He passes. At the end of Drake's turn, Zack casts Ad Nauseam. Archaic triggers, and Drake copies Ad Nauseam. It resolves, and Drake reveals Marsh Flats, Lion's Eye Diamond, Force of Negation, Collector Oof, 
Dark Ritual, Noble Hierarch, Mana Vault, Mystical Tutor, Brain Freeze, Jataxian Probe, Birds of Paradise, Jeweled Lotus, Scrubland, and an Enlightened Tutor, deciding to stop there. Then, Zack Sadnaz resolves, Zack reveals a Scrubland, Miscast, Spire of Industry, Mystic Remora, Cyclonic Rift, Lotus Petal, Force of Negation, and a Force of Will, deciding to stop there. Drake passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt trigger. He draws and plays a Scrubland into play tapped. Zack passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt trigger. He draws and casts a Mana Gorger Hydra. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Falco Spara. In response, Zack overloads Cyclonic Rift. Archaic and Mana Gorger Hydra trigger. Mana Gorger gets a counter and Zack doesn't pay for Archaic. Drake copies Cyclonic Rift. In response, Charles floats Mana with Sarah Sanctum. Then Drake's and Zack's Cyclonic Rift resolve, bouncing the board. Everyone feels as if they've kind of been here before. Before the end of combat, Charles flashes in Hushwing Griff. In response, Chad casts Force of Will, paying a life, and exiling a blue card, targeting Hushwing Griff. In response, Drake casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, and targeting Force of Will. Force of Negation resolves, and Force of Will is countered and exiled. Then Hushwing Griff resolves, and still in combat, Charles flashes in a Cathar Commando. In his second main phase, Chad casts Mana Crypt. He casts Swords of Plowshares, targeting Hushwing Griff. In response, Drake pays 2 life to help cast Mental Misstep, targeting Swords to Plowshares, countering it. Chad casts a Soul Ring. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Force of Vigor. He recasts Mana Gorger Hydra. He taps his Mana Confluence and Horizon Canopy to help recast his commander, Falco Spara. Mana Gorger triggers and gets a 1-1 counter. He taps his Articar Waste to help cast Thassa's Oracle. Mana Gorger Hydra gets a counter. Thassa's Oracle resolves, but doesn't get a trigger because of Hush Ring Griff. Sadly, Chad passes the turn. Charles draws and plays the Snow-Covered Plains. He casts Esper Sentinel. Mana Gorger gets a counter, and then he recasts Grand Abolisher, and Mana Gorger grows again. In response, Drake cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. Still in response, Drake casts Mystical Tutor. Mana Gorger and Esper trigger. Charles draws from Esper, and Mana Gorger grows. Mystical Tutor resolves, and Drake fetches up an Assassin's Trophy onto the top of his library. Charles then taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast the Restoration of Iganjo for what feels like the millionth time. Mana Gorger grows, Restoration resolves, and gets a counter. Charles fetches up a Snow-Covered Plains into his hand. He recasts Blind Obedience, and Mana Gorger grows again. He activates Nykthos, adding 7 white. He recasts Land Tax, and Mana Gorger gets a counter. He recasts Sanctum Prelate, and Mana Gorger gets a counter again. As Prelate enters, Charles names 2. He recasts Archon of Emeria, and Mana Gorger gets a counter. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Hushring Griff and Cathar Commando. Zack takes it, and all finished up with no Cyclonic Rifts in sight, Charles passes, discarding to hand size. Drake draws and recasts his commander, Eleven the Mage. Mana Gorger Hydra gets another counter, and then Drake gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire, tapped through Archon. He casts Mystic Remora. Mana Gorger gets a counter, and then Zack passes. During his upkeep, Chad loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He moves to his draw step and attempts to draw from an empty library, losing the game. Before the turn moves to Charles, Drake cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield tapped. The turn moves to Charles. Charles draws, and in his first main phase, the Restoration of Aganjo gets its second counter. He discards and reanimates Machiko's Reign of Truth into play tapped. Machiko triggers and gets a counter, targeting Archon of Ameria. He casts Catilda's Rising Dawn for its Disturbed cast from his graveyard. Blind Obedience and Remora trigger. Charles pays for both. His opponents each lose one, and he gains two. Catilda's Rising Dawn enters and enchants Esper Sentinel. Charles moves to combat, and seeing the writing on the wall, both Zack and Drake extend a hand to Charles, and Charles wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a game. Congrats to Charles on his well-fought win. Charles did what Charles does best, playing his hand and stacks pieces exceptionally well. He bided his time and fought through four Cyclonic Rifts. He gained huge mana advantage through cards like Ancient Tomb, Nykthos, and Sarasanctum, and was able to translate these into well-timed stacks pieces. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time and we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.